Thanks, Jim. Good evening. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak with you today about the new open source professional. In order to put some context to this discussion, though, I thought it might be helpful if I briefly describe my role at HP, because it does include both legal areas of responsibility as well as non-legal areas of responsibility. And as I was talking to my team about this, I thought I would just sort of go through and list out my areas of responsibility. However, my team thought it might be a better approach if I walked through some of the highlights from a day in my life instead. Thought it might be a little more interesting and quite frankly, a little more descriptive of what I do. So with that, and again, I won't bore you with all the details. I'll just give you some of the highlights in terms of, of the areas that I touch upon in a day in, day in and day out. The, on this particular day that I chose on my calendar, um, I started with a committee meeting. And as Jim mentioned, I represent HP on the Linux Foundation Board of Directors and the OpenStack Foundation Board of Directors. And I actually really enjoy that work. It's, for me, it's kind of a fun intersection of issues that arise in technology, in open source, legal issues get interspersed. So it's really a nice mix of really interesting issues. As a result, I tend to volunteer for a number of board committees. Um, on this particular day, we had a dev core committee for OpenStack. So the OpenStack board is working on something called the Dev Core Committee for defining core OpenStack. So um, I went back through my notes to refresh my recollection of this particular meeting, and it was interesting. We had a, a broad range of discussions around technology. Um, OpenStack is comprised of multiple different projects, so we talked about those aspects of it. We talked about aspects relating to the community. We even touched upon legal issues. We were talking about the trademark licensing, the trademark policy. So a nice mix of, of issues and great diversity in terms of perspectives and, and um, discussion arose in that meeting. Then I switched gears and I went into an internal meeting. So my team is responsible for leading HP's open source review board, so our OSRB. And our OSRB at HP comprises of a number of, of individuals with very diverse backgrounds. The one common thread is that everyone has a deep understanding and appreciation of open source. They're all very passionate about open source. So I went into this discussion, and we were looking at a, a policy, and we're looking at revising a policy. So we spent a good bit of time kind of going back and forth with how we should approach this. And again, it was like, as I looked back on this meeting and looked back on this day, I came to the conclusion that, you know, it really does help to have that diversity of perspective. I think we wound up in a much better place with that particular policy than we would have if we looked at it from a very narrow lens. I think the broadening of the perspective really helps. Then I switched gears and went into um, a discussion, uh, a legal contract review. So I uh, manage legal support for our cloud organization. And so I went into a discussion with one of the lawyers on my team, and we were looking at various contract provisions and sort of how to approach something in the cloud space. And the interesting thing there is we were looking at how something was architected from a technology point of view, and then trying to figure out, okay, how do we best capture that in terms of the contract language? So for me, again, it's a nice mix of technology and the law kind of, kind of coming together there. And my last meeting of that particular day was um, a open source strategy discussion with Martin Fink. Uh, for those of you who don't know Martin Fink, he's HP's CTO. He was also our first vice president of open source. And he wrote a book on open source about 10 years ago. And it's called The Business and Economics of Linux and Open Source. Um, at the time, I wasn't with HP when he wrote the book and first published it. But I remember reading it at that time. And a lot of the concepts really resonated with me. So again, it's, it's taking a look in this broader look at open source. Um, so that particular discussion, I, I you know, thoroughly enjoy those kinds of discussions with Martin because he's a great strategic thinker and he's got this really amazing breadth and depth of knowledge uh, in the area of open source. So hopefully that'll give some of that description helps in terms of, of the content to follow. So from an agenda perspective, I first want to talk about the topic. So the new open source professional and kind of why I started thinking about this topic. Then talking about, you know, why do I believe there's this emergence of a new open source professional? And then it, what's the impact on organizations? And then what's the impact on the people, the individuals who work in those organizations and who work in the area of technology development? And then finally, who is the new open source professional? So in terms of the topic, I first started thinking about this topic. I was actually a few months back, I was on a flight from New York to San Francisco. And I, you know, I typically bring a fair amount of reading material on flights. So I had a, a whole stack of stuff I wanted to read. And one of the things that I wanted to reread re in that instance was an article I'd read by Jack Ellis in Intellectual Asset Management. And Jack Ellis, I thought, wrote this really brilliant piece on the intersection of intellectual property and open source. 
and it really resonated with me. There was one particular piece of, of the article that, that I really honed in on as well. And that was a, a quote that Keith Bergelt, uh, he's the CEO of Open Invention Network. In the article, he was talking about this emergence of a new open source legal professional. And he was describing this new open source legal professional as one of those individuals who can bridge these multiple worlds. These worlds of legal issues, business issues, intellectual property issues, and looking at those issues through an open source community lens. This was, I thought, just a brilliant articulation of sort of the world I felt like I had lived in for so many years as an open source legal professional. And then I started thinking about this even further. As because, again, because I have a, a role that sort of spans both legal and non-legal areas, I started thinking, to me, it feels like it's broader than that. It feels like we're sort of getting to this, this period where we're bridging multiple areas, not only in the legal realm, but in the broader open source realm as well. So I came to the conclusion that I believe there's a new open source professional. And then I had to sort of come to the, you know, start thinking about, well, why do I believe this? Why, why do I believe there's this emergence of a new open source professional? And why now? Why after I've been in, in sort of the open source world for 10, 15 years now, why do I believe now in 2014 I see this as the emergence of a new open source professional? In order to answer that question, I started looking at what was happening in open source generally in the industry. What was happening in terms of open source development? So I went back and started looking at some statistics. And what I found was, you know, looking at a 30-year trend, Early 1980s to early 1990s, we'd start to see a lot of developers participating in open source on their spare time, in their off hours. Then in the early 1990s through the 2000s, we see enterprises starting to embrace open source. And I realize it's a pretty broad range in this middle category. And it's because different industries, I think, adopted and embraced open source at different periods in time. But again, during this really broad range, we start to see enterprises really embracing open source. Fast forward to where we are today in 2014, and now we see over 50% of enterprises are participating in adopting and working in open source development, a pretty radical shift. Elaborating on this just a bit, we also see that those enterprises are recognizing open source as a business imperative. And furthermore, those business leaders and business managers within these organizations are the ones taking the lead in initiating that open source participation. That's a pretty significant shift. If we look at it from the software developer's perspective, this quote I was just absolutely fascinated with because it's really interesting to me that where we are in 2014 is the number one reason for software developers to get involved in open source is that my job, my job required me to participate. Really a fundamental shift from the time in the early 1980s to early 1990s when they were participating in their spare time and their off hours. So I started wondering, okay, well, how does this particular shift to open source development impact those organizations involved in technology development? And I think in order to, this, to answer this question, I needed to look at sort of how technology is developed. So I looked first at the traditional development model. And bear with me, because I realize this is a broad oversimplification. However, uh, the point is that I think what I saw happening in the traditional development model when I first started working in technology was I saw it development being you know, done sequentially. And I realize that some of these boxes may be in, in different orders for different companies. However, you, know, you start basically with an engineer engineering model in the sense that you're building a product, then it goes to build the business development for that business case. You go into the product, you go to the marketing, and finally at the end, the legal group gets involved, which was my area where you write the contract and, and sell the product. This was the way it was done in the traditional development model. And from an organizational point of view, it followed that in the sense that the organizations were very much siloed. So taking a look at where we are today with the open source model, I'm seeing a very significant shift in terms of organizations. And from just the microcosm perspective, the perspective that I see in my day-to-day -day job, and from talking with the peers of mine who have similar roles in other companies, what we're seeing in our organizations, in terms of our open source organizations, we're seeing an intermix 
an intermix of disciplines in the sense that we're having these groups work much more collaboratively together. So it's a much more fluid and interactive approach. So very different, I believe, from the traditional open source, the traditional development model. So what impact then is this move to open source development having on the individuals, the people who work in technology development and support technology development? So if we again look at those traditional roles, I think the traditional roles were very much siloed and they very much followed the traditional development approach. In the sense that in engineering, if you had engineers developing a product, they typically worked with the other engineers and developers within their organization. The same would hold true with marketing, for instance. The marketing folks would typically work with the other marketing folks within their organization to develop the product marketing, to develop the external messaging, those kinds of things. And then, of course, same thing held true in legal. In legal, I primarily worked with the other lawyers in my organization to develop those contracting models. So very much the individuals very much followed the siloed approach, and it made a lot of sense. If we go now to the open source model, I think it's very different. Two significant differences I see in the open source model are that you have this overlapping of roles. You have this sort of blending and blurring of responsibilities. And then the second thing you have is this overlay of this external influence in the sense that you've got the external open source project. Looking at project management and product management as one example, in the traditional model, the product management team would develop a product cycle, work through it, very much internally focused. When you look at the open source model, if you're developing products and you're developing technologies where you've got a big component of that is open source, you're then working very closely with that open source community and tying in with their development cycle and their release cycle. So again, it's this bringing in and blurring of these lines as well as this external influence, which I think is really interesting. So now that we've kind of talked through the fact that I do believe there's the emergence of the new open source professional, as well as why I think that's the case because of the shift to open development, and then further the impact on organizations as well as the impact to those individuals. Who then is the new open source professional? Actually, I believe it's most of us in this room. I believe that we are continuing to evolve and work together as open source professionals. And I think our roles are changing. And we're in that process right now where we're further defining our roles. I think we're on this journey together as we're defining this new open source professional, which I think is a pretty exciting time to be in. Even though I think we all have different roles and responsibilities and, and work for different companies, I think there are some commonalities that I see are, that are emerging amongst us as new open source professionals. The two that I see are, I see that we have certain key attributes where we've got commonality. The second thing that I see is that in talking with many folks in open source, the folks I talk to have nonlinear career paths. And I'll talk in a moment what I mean by that, but those are the two keys that I see. First, looking at some of the attributes of the new open source professional, I think there are some of those hard skill types of attributes, such as you know, technical aptitude, business aptitude, legal aptitude, and then recognizing that you know, each of those are somewhat different depending upon your role. But I think equally important, if not maybe more important, are the soft skill attributes, in the sense that you know, I think the folks that I've met in open source and the things that we all share are, I see an open-mindedness to us in the sense that I see that we've, we appreciate and, and, and seek out differing views and perspectives on things. Then I also find us, as a, in general, a very collaborative bunch. And I mean collaborative both internally within our companies as well as externally within the broader community. The same thing I think holds true in terms of consensus driven. Because again, I think if you're working in this open source ecosystem, I see us as, again, appreciating these different perspectives and trying to build those in to drive a consensus. And a consensus both within our companies and our respective communities, as well as the broader open source community at large. The second thing I see is a nonlinear career path. From the folks I've talked to, they tend to have these nonlinear career paths. There doesn't seem to be a prescriptive career path to becoming an open source professional. And I put, out, put a couple examples here. The second one is mine. This is my nonlinear career path. And these are just some of the sort of the inflection points that um, I kind of grappled with in my career. 
So I'll start with the, the, the first one, with applied mathematics. So originally, I was an applied mathematic, mathematics major at UC Berkeley. And I was in my junior year, um, spring semester of my junior year, I took a political science class. And it was South African politics, to be exact. So I took this class, and I really enjoyed the class. I enjoyed the coursework, I enjoyed writing the paper, I enjoyed the discussions. I just really enjoyed every aspect of it. So I went to my career counselor and said, I don't know what to do. I'm in my junior year, I'm on track to graduate next year, I'm planning to get a PhD in applied math, and I wanna be a math professor. That's my plan. So she kind of sat me down and talked to me quite a bit and said, look, you know, net net is, if you're passionate about something, if you find something else that you're really enjoying, and I, I get the fact that you've loved math all your life, but, but you know what, you, you seem very passionate about this, you know, you've gotta be open to change. And also further, follow where your, what your passions are, because you will ultimately wind up in the right place for you. So I heeded that advice, switched my major, still managed to graduate uh, within four years, barely, um, majored in political science, went to law school, and shortly after I started practicing law, I started practicing in the area of technology law, and I encountered an open source matter, and I loved it. It was really fun. For me, it sort of, it brought together all those components that Keith Bergelt articulated in terms of the new open source professional, in the sense that it had a technology aspect to it, it had you know, a business aspect to it, it had a legal aspect to it, and everything was sort of viewed through this community lens. It was really fun. So at that point, I thought, okay, this is where I'm going. So I you know, started embarking upon this path. And for many years, I defined myself and viewed myself as an open source lawyer. That was my identity. And then about four years ago or so, I had the opportunity to rotate into a business role. And at the time, I was very nervous about it because I hadn't done a business role. I was very familiar in, in the legal space. That was my comfort zone. Um, but I thought, okay, let me just try this, see how it goes. If I, I fail, I can pick up and learn again. Um, but it was a great opportunity. It was a business role where I was helping to define a strategy, and the strategy had an open source component to it. So for me, it was really, really fun and a great learning experience. It kind of opened up my eyes and broadened my skill set in terms of understanding open source, not only from kind of the legal lens which I typically had viewed it, but instead from a broader community lens, for which was really a lot of fun. And that's how I wound up as an open source professional. But again, I think the, the, the learning I've, I've had from talking with so many folks is most people do have these sort of nonlinear career paths, and then they wind up as open source professionals. Um, but the commonality I think that we all share is a passion for open source. And that's something that, it, that I'm, I'm just you know, thrilled about, and that's, it makes me you know, happy to get up and go to work every day and, and practice as an open source professional. So to sum up, again, I do see this pretty significant shift to open source development, and I see that shift continuing. I think it's had a significant impact to the organizations and also the people, the people and the individual who work in technology development and who support technology development. And finally, I view us, all of us, as on the journey together, emerging as this new class of open source professionals. So with that, I'll leave a couple concluding uh, remarks around um, with HP. HP Cloud is hiring the new open source professional, so if you're interested, please feel free to stop by the HP booth. And then finally, um, there's some great stuff going on um, via the HP Helion Developer Network. We've got a workshop tomorrow afternoon, and there's a lot of great, exciting stuff going on um, in that space. So feel free to stop by the booth to learn more. Thank you. I can live